church family I have a very brief announcement about pastor's anniversary we are celebrating Reverend Sherry on this upcoming Sunday May 23rd it's pastor's anniversary Sunday we're celebrating her fourth anniversary now here's what I need you to do I want to get some more tributes we have some great tributes that have come in please go to upchurch.org click pastor's anniversary and you can upload your video tribute or you can write a tribute Either way, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to let Reverend Sherry know that you appreciate the work that she's doing. We want to encourage her, and maybe there's a way she has impacted your life that you especially want to share. I want to encourage you to go to upchurch.org and do that today, please. We want to get as many as we can, and we want everything to be done decently and in order. Secondly, we want you to participate by sharing a gift with Reverend Sherry. We want her to feel just submerged in the love, and so we're going to do it four ways. You can give through our normal giving methods, text to give, cash app, you can give online or write a check. All of those methods are the same. Just be sure to choose pastor's anniversary or write that in the memo. Or you can give her a literal gift. You can go to her Amazon gift registry and choose something off the list to, and it'll go right to her. All that you have to do is just put in her, put in the information uh, and, and pay for it and it'll go right to her. So I wanna encourage you to share a gift with Reverend Sherry. And we have some other activities planned. So if you could go to upchurch.org and check them out, we're also going to send an email to all of the members so that you're able to uh, to, to see what, not, not just members, our members and friends, so that you can see the other activities that we have planned. I can't spill the tea. So I need you to go and check your email, check upchurch.org and know what's going on with pastor's anniversary. Forgive me for being a person that's filled with surprises, but I just love it. I love to see people's faces light up with the good that they didn't know was coming. So pastor's anniversary next week, take action. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. We couldn't let another moment go by, another Sunday go by. We want to continue to pay tribute to Reverend Sherry as a little pre-tribute. Uh, we have someone very special who's going to share their appreciation for the work Reverend Sherry has been doing. I think you're going to know who this person is. Here's what I know for sure. Up Church, Della Reese, and the Up Choir unequivocally changed my life. The lessons that I learned that I started learning 21 years ago I use every single day. 
in some way or another to uplift myself, to remind myself of the truth, to remind myself to celebrate some awesome stuff going on regardless of what it is, those lessons then and through the years that I was blessed to be there every Sunday still help me now. So I'm so grateful and I want to say thank you for picking up that and carrying it forward. And I know and I hope that you know that you are changing people's lives for the better because you're doing it. I love you as my friend. I love you and miss you as my hiking partner, even though you like to hike at ridiculously early hours. And I love you as my fellow Wednesday night person who also became a minister. But what I want to tell you most importantly right now is happy anniversary. Hey, everybody. Do you miss your upchurch friends and family? I know we do. And who knows for sure when we'll have an opportunity to be live again. But in the meantime, we do have the after party, which is a great way to socialize, to see your old friends, to chit chat, and to get to know some new friends. See, over the last year, we've had a number of guests and new members from literally all over the world who have begun to uh, fellowship with us here at Up Church, who have begun taking classes, and who have been a part of the after party as well. So I want to invite you to come to the after party every Sunday after church, join in, see your old friends, make some new ones, and have a good time. We look forward to seeing you after church. Hey, here's the link right here in the video, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Let's thank our social media all-stars. Thank you everyone who is helping us to spread the word. Thank you for your shares. Thank you for your likes. Our list is growing longer. People that we need to acknowledge, but we appreciate you. Thank you. You're helping us make a difference. And thank you, Glenda McCray Fikes, for choosing the clips that we're using for the month of May to circulate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you guys. If you want to be a part of our social media team, make sure you reach out to our church office. Let us know and we will put you in the rotation. We would love your help. Hey, stopping by, got a very special announcement. This week's Bible Hangout is going to feature my brother in ministry, the Reverend Charles Taylor. We're going to be talking about a couple of verses in the third chapter of Proverbs, and he will be there to guide us through the metaphysical Bible interpretation. So if you're not already on the list to get the link for the Bible Hangout, make sure you call our church office so that you can get that information. And we will see you on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific.
Mother God, you are our hope in dark despair. Father, Mother God, we always know that you are there. Father, Mother God. Come on in. I'm Reverend Cherry James, and I'm so excited that you are here. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started. If you are watching this on Facebook, make sure that you like, that you subscribe, that you share, that you tell somebody about this. When you guys spread the word, it helps us get the word out. And same thing, if you're on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave us a comment and make sure you hit that bell so that you can get notifications when we upload new content. Oh, this is going to be a good, good Sunday. I'm excited. Let's take a moment to open this service in prayer. Would you pray with me? Father, Mother, God, we thank you for an absolutely delicious and wonderful service. We thank you for awakening us to the Christ presence of our being. We thank you that we are more than we have seen at, at thus far in our lives. And we have come together to worship for the purpose of releasing the divine splendor within. We know that we shall be given all of the advantages, advantages of the resources of God to achieve the things that you have given us to do. And so we thank you for this service, providing the encouragement, the reminder, the nudge, whatever it is that we need in order to take that next step, in order to go ahead and, and reach for a higher expression. And I pray for those that might be suffering, that might be hurting, that might be feeling like they have been left alone. Let what we do send a force around the world to remind people that you love us, that you have not left us to fend for ourselves, but that you are everywhere, evenly present, breathing yourself as us. And so even in our despair, there is the presence and the power of God that is there to lift us out of it. And so we call on that divine presence now to work a perfect miracle. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I release this prayer in the name and in the nature and the consciousness of I am. This prayer is so, and so it is. Understanding Principles for Better Living Church, aka Up Church, is a Bible-based, new thought Christian church. In this community, we study the scriptures metaphysically. In this community, we believe in the divine nature of all people. In this community, we embrace all people, all faiths, no matter how you come showing up. Let me share with you our North Star, our vision. 
Our vision is to love every person up to their true identity and to their highest potential for the greater good of all. And our mission is to express God's divine love through teaching spiritual principles, worship services, fellowship activities, and community outreach. And our theme this year is Open Your Mind. And we're working from a series, we're working on a series from a book by Catherine Ponder called Open Your Mind to Receive. And this is a powerful text because so often we block our good. We literally run interference on the blessings that are meant for us. And so every week in this series, we've been working on a different concept to help us to release what is in the way and make ourselves an equivalent, a vibrational equivalent for the good that we desire. And today we're going to be working from chapter five, the gift of a people consciousness. And so my sermon has a similar title, the power of a people consciousness. So I'll explain what all of that is, but right now let's take a moment. We're going to quiet ourselves so that we may be receptive for what the spirit has for us. Let's sit comfortably in our seats and just breathe easy. Let the chair support you. And after about half a minute or so, we're gonna pick up the phrase, I am love. I am love. You just wanna hold that phrase. I am love. The truth of who I am is that I am love. If you find that your mind wanders, no judgment, just simply bring it back to the phrase, I am love. Imagine those words moving all in and through you. I am love. In these quiet moments, we let the spirit nurture us. In these quiet moments, we let the spirit restore us. All that seemed to have been lacking is now returned to us. In this quiet space, we are made whole. Thank you, Spirit. As we bring this moment of quiet to a close, we hold to this idea that I am love. I am love. At 
my core, I am love. The essence of me is that I am love. When you're ready, you may open your eyes. Take a moment to say thanks. And hold to the idea that God is biased toward your success. And you are like your creator. Therefore, you are love. Thank you so much for that meditation, Reverend Sherry. You know, the beautiful thing about meditation is that you cannot fail. Every attempt to make conscious contact with the one power and one presence is a success. So let's just all bask in the glow of success. We have to come apart, we have connected with God, and all is well. We know it, we feel it, we breathe it. I'm Reverend Cherie Thompson, and I am so excited to be with you today. It's my joy to be able to welcome you through the doors of Up Church. Now, I know Reverend Sherry has given you all the welcome and has said hello and has really, really made you feel the love. I'm here to speak to you if you're visiting with Up Church specifically for the first time, or maybe you've visited just a few times. I want to let you know where you have walked through, the doors you've walked through, virtually or not that this is a loving, powerful community and everything that we do is designed to inspire you to be all of who God created you to be. We truly desire for you to be loved up to your true potential. And so with that, I wanna let you know that if you hear something here today that really rocks you, that really hits you at your core, I want you to consider growing with Up Church. Join us. To become a member of Up Church is a very amazing process, very much an amazing process. All that you need to do is take the first step. Let us know that you're interested. Let us know that this message is working for you, that you are feeling your life improved through hearing it, that you have finally found your tribe. I want you to let us know. Email us at upchurch at upchurch.org. We would love to have you and we'll give you your next steps. Thank you so much for considering Up Church for your spiritual home. And I want to let you know that you've walked through virtual doors but that the party is here, the congregation is here, the community is here to celebrate the Lord. And so I want you to know who you are worshiping with. So congregation, I want you to do this for me now. I want you to come in with it strong. We're gonna introduce ourselves to one another using our spiritual name. And so the way that you do that is you put I am next to a quality of God. I am plus a quality of God, that is your spiritual name. I'll go first, I'm so grateful to be here. I am joy. Tell me your spiritual name. Tell us your spiritual name, put it in the chat. You're welcome to put it in the comments or if you are not commenting or chatting, I want you to participate. Speak your spiritual name out loud. Be sure we can feel the energy. We wanna shake the atmosphere right now because prior to this moment, maybe you have felt yourself to be less than what is really true of you. Maybe you've been identifying yourself with being tired, with being sick, with being impatient, with being lonely. This is the time to shake that energy up and declare your spiritual name to activate the power of God in this moment. Just declare it out loud. And I want you to know that we see you, we honor you, and we're so grateful to be able to worship together, to be able to continue to rise in consciousness. Amen, amen, amen. And so after this, right, we've had a chance. I want you to still add into the chat. I want to let you know what's coming up next. We have our daily inspiration for better living. And the daily inspiration is a powerful publication. They come in two month sets and we're going to work with today's inspiration. And I want you to open yourself up to listen, to hear and find the truth that you need in this short message. Good afternoon, Upchurch family. My name is Amiri McKinnon, and today I'll be presenting you with the Daily Inspiration. Sunday, May 16th, 2021. We are one. Congregants of UFBO churches can be heard affirming these truth statements in services across the world. I am one with God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one with the one. These powerful statements confirm and reaffirm the strength of the universal family, united together as parts of the greater spiritual whole. Although we each are a unique part of the grand scheme of greater things, it remains true that united we stand, divided we fall. Therefore, 
Let us consciously seek to realize our oneness by living in agreement with one another and thriving from the totality of our diverse soul awareness and experiences. Our combined energy synthesizes and unites us in a harmony that exemplifies the love of our Father expressed in various ways. As we all try to find our individual way home to the truth of our being, let us also go forth and shine as a beacon of light that illumines the path for others to follow. Let us live in the internal awareness that we are one in the spirit of unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalms chapter 133 verse 1, New King James Version. I just love, love, love the sweet voices that are giving us the daily inspirations for better living. Um, I hope you got what you needed to get out of that powerful inspiration. Now we're going to speak the word of truth for ourselves. So we listened with the daily inspiration. Now we're going to speak the word with our affirmation of power. And so I'm going to speak the affirmation first, and then we will affirm together. There is power in my spoken word. I speak love in my relationships. I speak life in my body. I speak peace in my mind and in my heart. I speak prosperity in my finances. Thank you, God. Divine order is established and my life gets better right now. Let's affirm that together. There is power in my spoken word. I speak love in my relationships. I speak life in my body. I speak peace in my heart and mind. I speak prosperity in my finances. Thank you, God. Divine love is established and my life gets better right now. And so it is. Amen, amen, amen. Ooh, powerful words. I'm feeling them today. I'm reminded now of the power of my spoken word. I'm reminded right now that I can speak life into my body. I'm reminded right now that I can speak love into every relationship. The power is in my spoken word. I'm using it rightly right now. So this is our affirmation of power for the month. I want you to commit that to memory. Have it working with you, just even if it's just one line that you can work with. And, uh, and use it. This is the truth that we use. We're a practical Christianity. Um, what's coming up next is a, a powerful testimony. We're going to ask you to open your mind and to experience the newness that is coming through Carlos Fuentes. He is one of our devoted members, former board member, former everything. Uh, Carlos has been very active in the ministry, and we're so grateful to have him share this moment. Now, before I turn it over to him, you know, I can't let one of these Sundays go by without reminding you that next Sunday is Pastor's Anniversary. Pastor's Anniversary is our celebration for Reverend Sherry, her fourth year from being installed as the Senior Minister of Up Church. We are so grateful for her service, especially over the last year. We want to make sure that we honor her, that we love her, and that we are actively showing her that we appreciate the work that she's doing. Now, what you'll need to do is just go to upchurch.org, click on Pastor's Anniversary, and there's tons of information there for what we need you to do. Most importantly, we need your tributes. So go ahead and go to upchurch.org, click on Pastor's Anniversary, and share with us a tribute for Reverend Sherry. Whether it's a video or a written tribute, we would really appreciate it. We want her to know how much we appreciate her. And then there are other little activities on there that I, got, I can't let the cat out the bag. So they're on the website. We appreciate and love you. And now we're gonna hear how Carlos is opening his mind in 2021. Hi, my name is Carlos Fuentes. And this year in 2021, I'm focusing my experience on love and how I can give love to myself, love to others and love to God. And I'm focusing on myself primarily because I've been neglecting myself a little bit here or there, but this year in 2021 is the time for me to really refocus and do the things that I need to do to feel happy and I am complete, whole, and I uh, love myself most of all. So that's what I'm concentrating my energy on this 2021. Thank you. If there's 
anyone from the past or present that I need to forgive now I do so I simply let go I bless them I love them I forgive song. Thank you. Thank you, Noriko, for that. That song grew out of our study of Mae McCarthy's The Path to Wealth, the forgiveness song. If there's anyone from my past or present that I need to forgive, 
I now do so. If there's anyone from my past or present that needs to forgive me, they now do so. It is such a fitting song because today I'm going to be talking about your people consciousness. And my sermon title is The Power of a People Consciousness. And I am just going to go out on a limb and say that this is one of the most important sermons that I'm going to give this year. Because if you're going to deal with people and all of us deal with people on some level sometimes, you're going to need to understand how to develop, how to manifest, how to maximize your gift of a people consciousness. The guiding scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. There is only one, there are no two, there is only one. And so though you may look to be different than me, there is only one. The same energy intelligence that breathes itself as me is breathing itself as you. And so when deep calls to deep, when I recognize who you really are, no matter how you have shown up in my experience, we are the same. And so we must not be fooled by these outer appearances, thinking that they say something about difference and that there are those people over there and these people over here. No, 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 no. There is one people, one Lord, one faith, one God, one. Many names, one God. And so my thesis today is that your ability to fulfill God's divine plan for your life boils down to the quality of your relation or your personal relationships, your ability to fulfill God's divine plan for your life boils down to the quality of your personal relationships. You have got to understand how people factor into God's divine plan for you. You know how when you are cooking a, 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 a cake, there is no such thing. Well, I guess you could not put sugar in the cake. I know there are some of y'all keto folks out there, but those of you who know how to cook cakes. <laughs> so there, there are essential ingredients that in the absence of those ingredients, you don't have that thing. And, and I want to tell you that God's divine plan for your life is like that. People are an indispensable ingredient in God's divine plan for your life. So you're going to have to learn how to work with people. You're going to have to develop that people consciousness because God uses people to bless people. God uses people to bless people. This is what she says. She says, God is the source of of all your good, but God uses people as channels for bringing blessings to you. God is the source, people are the channels. There is no blessing walking, coming into your life that did not come by virtue of a person. Every blessing arrives courtesy of some person. And so from your car, your home, your clothes, your food, your very life, a person other than you was involved in its manifestation. People are an indispensable ingredient in the divine plan for your experience. And so no person is an island. No person is an island. It, she writes, it is both humbling and inspiring 
to realize how much of our good comes to us through other people. It is also humbling, though not so inspiring, to realize how often we have cut off the channels to our good by not appreciating the people who are already in our lives. Let me say it this way. Everyone in your life, good, bad, or otherwise, is carrying a blessing for you. Everyone, I'm talking the check, the, the, the teller at the bank. Um, do anybody go into banks anymore? The teller at the bank. I'm talking the checker at the checkout counter, as well as your children or your parents or whatever family members are still in your life, as well as your co-workers, your friends, your church members, the folks you interact with online, everybody in your life is carrying a package containing a blessing for you. And the way that you get the blessing is through appreciating them. If they are in your life and you are not a, and you don't have a blessing from them, it is not on them, it is on you not appreciating them. How about that? How about that? I, I think I'm going to step on some toes today and I'm just telling you, curl your toes, put your feet under you. <laughs> if, the, if there is somebody in your life and they are not blessing you, like you're not consciously aware of the blessing that they are there to provide, it is not on them. It is on you. Ah. I wrote this note because this came when I was preparing. Be wary of people who don't like people. Be wary of people who don't like people because when you run up on a person who doesn't like people, what I want you to do is to slowly back away. Slowly get yourself out of the way because what you are dealing with is a person who is out of touch with the way that the universe works. And I'm, and, and I'm saying people who don't like all people, and I'm saying people who don't like some people. You know, I just don't like them. I don't know what it is. I can't trust them. I can't, I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. I, because you are dealing with someone who doesn't get that the way that God blesses you is through people. And so everyone in your life, is carrying a package and the way that you get it out of them is through appreciating them. People are one of God's primary vehicles for blessings. And so I try to come up with an alliteration to make this sermon memorable. I want you step one to review, to reframe and revamp. Those are my three points for you today. Review, reframe, revamp. Review, reframe, revamp. All right, step number one. You want to review. You want to make an honest success assessment of your people consciousness. Be honest with yourself. Here's the thing. The, the universe is an exact mirror of what's really going on in you. But you want to be present to it so that you can do something about it. And so if there are places where you may be dropping the ball as far as a people consciousness, it's be, be aware of that. See, as a spiritual being made in the image likeness of God, you have dominion over your world. You have dominion over your world. That means you have freedom concerning the kinds of people who come into your world and who leave your world. You have the freedom to change your world. If you don't like your world or the people in it, you can do something about it because you have been given the gift of a people consciousness. Your people consciousness is your attitude about people. Your people consciousness is the sum total of everything you think and feel about people. And so instead of trying to change people in the world, what you want to focus on is changing your consciousness, changing your attitude about those people. That's your work. You have the gift of a people consciousness. And I am a witness that the person who would seem to do you harm is actually a blessing, is, is sent to bless you. And the way that you interact with them, the way that you think about them determines what you draw from them. 
And very often we are blocking the good. This whole series is about opening up to receive. Very often we block the good that we would have simply because of how we are interacting with the people in our lives. All of the people in your world are there through the law of attraction. Either consciously or unconsciously, you have attracted them through your thoughts and your feelings. And you either did it in this life or perhaps at some other time, but they are not there by accident. Breathe. Because maybe you had someone in your life that really did you dirty. Maybe you had someone in your life that really uh, tried to harm you. And I want you to get that the moment that you begin to appreciate, oh my God, I can hear your voices now. The moment that you can appreciate that person, you will begin to dissolve the sting of what it is that they thought they were doing and you will begin to extract the blessing from it. Maybe you were at a place in your life, maybe you were a child and you didn't know that you had dominion. Maybe you were in, in a situation where you had been told that this is how you had to handle it and you believe the people who told you that and so then that made you open for the things that they then subsequently did to you. But you have now, all of that has conspired to bring you to this moment where we're having this conversation where I'm letting you know that you have dominion over the kinds of people that you have in your world. And so what you want to do is to begin to do a review. Are there people in your world that are not right for you? Are there people in your world that you have such strong feelings about? Because part of what's happening is that the negative feelings that you have about them, the, the negative emotions are actually tying them to you. And the more negatively you feel about them, you literally wrap yourself tighter to them. Isn't that something? This is a letting go process that when you appreciate someone, you actually let them go and you free them. And so one of the ways that you can appreciate someone is just to sit and write out all the things that that person gave you because no one comes bearing only evil. Everyone comes bearing a mix. And so what you want to begin to do is to drive your attention on the good and it will begin to change that person's impact in your experience. See, all of your problems and all of your blessings are related to people. So developing your people consciousness is one of the greatest things that you can do to improve your world. Here's an affirmation. No person, this is in the text, no person, thing, or event can keep me from that which the universe has for me now. That, let me say that again. No person, thing, or event can keep me from that which the universe has for me now. What does the universe have for me? What's in your heart to have? Do you desire a nice house? Do you desire loving companionship? Do you desire great friends? No person, thing, or event can keep from me that which the universe has for me now. Here's the kicker. All that has been done against me now helps me. Listen, experience is neutral. Experience is neutral. It doesn't mean anything until you say what it means. So what I'm telling you is that you are taking the things that have been the bad things that have happened to you and you are changing what they mean to you. All that has been done against me now helps me. Whatever it is, all that has been done against me now. See, those who often gripe about the people in their world seldom take advantage when given an opportunity to bring new people into their lives. That's really the truth. In reality, they actually enjoy their people problems. 
and they don't really want freedom from them. And so the question that you have to answer for yourself is that are you attached to the problem people in your life or are you really willing to let them go? Are you genuinely ready to release them? Because some, it, 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 maybe you believe that you have to have them in your experience. Or there is some perverse enjoyment that you get out of complaining. That if you didn't complain about them, what would you talk about? So this is step one, review. Step number two, reframe. You got to clean up any faulty attitudes you have about people. You got to clean up. Are you willing to let new people in? See, we often cut ourselves off from our good because we don't appreciate the channels presently in our lives, right? Or we're so bitter about the way that things have played out that no new people can come and bring us anything good. And so we're kind of stuck in a little corner, unable to have anything better. An attitude sets up, it sets it up so that we have no room for anything good in our lives. Your people consciousness is about your attitude. So when you shift that attitude, it, it allows you to bring new people into your experience. She writes, problem people are in our lives by divine appointment. Though the appointment may not seem to be divine, Problem people are in our lives because we have attracted them for one of two reasons. Number one, so we can bless them. Number two, so we can learn something from them. And so if we resent problem people, if we fight them, if we criticize them, we literally hold them in our lives by our own strong negative emotions. You are in my life by divine appointment. You have crossed my path so I may learn something from you. This is what you learn to say to that person who is a problem person, that coworker who is always trying to do something to undermine you, that family member that every time you see them, they got to dig about your weight or what you look like or what you're doing. That you, are, you, are, you are in my life by divine appointment. You have crossed my path so that I may learn something from you. You have crossed my path to receive my blessing. I freely give you my blessing and I now release you to your highest good elsewhere. See, developing a people consciousness, changing your attitude about people does not mean keeping problem people in your experience. You have dominion. You have authority to move those people out of your life. But sometimes what's anchoring them to you, sometimes what's got you joined at the hip is your own negative emotions about it. So you've got to, as while you are moving them out of your experience, change your attitude about them. And it will be very easy to let them go. You are in my life by divine appointment. You have crossed my path so I may learn something from you. You have crossed my path to receive my blessing. I freely give you my blessing. And I now release you to your highest good elsewhere. Elsewhere. See, God brings into my life right now the people who can help me and make me happy and whom I can help and make happy. Those people who are no longer for my highest good now fade out of my life. Ooh, hallelujah. And find their good elsewhere. Those who are not for my highest good, I let them go, I let them go, I let them go. And I bless them on their way. I, I have dominion over who gets my time. I have dominion, right? And so the reframing process is about reframing my attitude. You are no longer a problem person. You are here to get a blessing. I am here to bless you. I am here to release you so that you may go to your highest good somewhere else. I don't stay in problem situations. See, you have to become a vibrational match for your good, right? So you want to become even 
in tone with the thing that you are calling forward. And when your life is full of problem people, hello, when your life is full of problem people, your vibration is off. I can't have all that in my experience. And so what I've got to do is adjust. I've got to begin to reframe how I see the problem people in my experience. I've got to change seeing them as a problem person. Rather, I've got to see them as carrying a blessing that this is the package that I, the only package I knew how to get it out of at this point in my consciousness. And so God brings into my life the right people who can help me and make me happy and whom I can help and make happy. Those people who are no longer for my highest good now fade out of my life and find their good elsewhere. I bless them on their way. Ooh, that's powerful. And so step number three, revamp. Move into your life people who are right for you and move out of your life people who are wrong for you. You might have to revamp your whole social structure, but see the fruit of the spirit is peace. And so if having you in my life is not bringing me peace, you don't belong in my life. If having you in my life is strife and struggle, you don't belong in my life. You know a relationship is not right when it robs you of your peace. The way to be sure how to do what is right for you is to do that which gives you an inner sense of peace. That which gives you an inner sense of peace is never going to harm another. And so you want to stop compromising the types of people that you have around you socially. Right. I might have to work with you, but I don't have to relax with you. You want to relax only with happy and constructive people. Let me tell you why, because when you are relaxed, there are suggestions that are absorbed into your subconscious mind quicker. And these suggestions, whether they are positive or negative, manifest results in your life very quickly. So because of this, you should only relax with happy people who think and speak constructively. You meet three kinds of people in life. Those you can help, those who are on your level mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and economically, and those who can help you. When you are relaxing, you want to only relax with those in the latter two groups. Right. Those last two categories, those who are on your level are those who can help you. Do not allow yourself to be drained mentally or emotionally by trying to relax with those who need your help. See, to do so is a strenuous way to relax and it is always disappointing. When you meet what what you mean to be a time of relaxation ends up being a time of work and you're not getting paid for it. So revamp, you want to revamp your social circle, revamp the people that you have around you. And so let's review. People are an indispensable ingredient in God's divine plan for you. So A, you want to review what is the quality of the relationships in my life and in what ways have my attitudes towards people made those relationships possible? B, you want to reframe how does my attitude need to change about people? Where do I need to clean up my people consciousness? How am I seeing people wrongly that's keeping them in my life in a way that's not serving me? Have I made people, have I forgotten that God is a source and people are the, are the channels? Am I treating someone like they're the source? And finally, C, revamp. Time to put on your big girl and big boy britches and move those people who are not good for you out of your life. Don't even, no. See, I'm trying to get out of me what God put inside of me to manifest and everything in my life has got to support that. And relationships that keep me in struggle and strife do not support the release of my greatness. 
relationships that keep me in, in, in just, you know, that discombobulated, just ain't nothing right. Don't help me get out of me what is in me to express. And so I have to do the heavy lifting of gently and lovingly releasing those relationships and blessing them to find their good elsewhere. You have a right to a good life. You have a right to a good life. You need to own that. God bless you.
Court Understanding Principles. You can text the word UP CHURCH to 73256 to complete your gift. You can use Cash App. Our Cash App ID is dollar sign UP CHURCH LA. You can also go to our website, upchurch.org. Choose the button Give Online. And finally, the mail still works. You can mail your gift to Understanding Principles, 600 West Queen Street, Inglewood, California, 90301. with that. I am in the flow. I give generously and I receive lavishly. My father, mother, God supplies all my needs. I am divinely supplied. All right, family. Thank you so much for your support. Let's have some announcements and then I'll be back to close this out. Hey, Up Church family, I have a very brief announcement about Pastor's Anniversary. We are celebrating Reverend Sherry on this upcoming Sunday, May 23rd. It's Pastor's Anniversary Sunday. We're celebrating her fourth anniversary. Now, here's what I need you to do. I want to get some more tributes. We have some great tributes that have come in. Please go to upchurch.org, click Pastor's Anniversary, and you can upload your video tribute or you can write a tribute. Either way, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to let Reverend Sherry know that you appreciate the work that she's doing. We want to encourage her, and maybe there's a way she has impacted your life that you especially want to share. I want to encourage you to go to upchurch.org and do that today, please. We want to get as many as we can, and we want everything to be done decently and in order. Secondly, we want you to participate by sharing a gift with Reverend Sherry. We want her to feel just submerged in the love, and so we're going to do it four ways. You can give through our normal giving methods, text to give, cash app, you can give online or write a check. All of those methods are the same. Just be sure to choose pastor's anniversary or write that in the memo. Or you can give her a literal gift. You can go to her Amazon gift registry and choose something off the list to, and it'll go right to her. All that you have to do is just put in her, put in the information uh, and, and pay for it and it'll go right to her. So I wanna encourage you to share a gift with Reverend Sherry. And we have some other activities planned. So if you could go to upchurch.org and check them out, we're also going to send an email to all of the members so that you're able to uh, to, to see what, not, not just members, our members and friends, so that you can see the other activities that we have planned. I can't spill the tea. So I need you to go and check your email, check upchurch.org and know what's going on with pastor's anniversary. Forgive me for being a person that's filled with surprises, but I just love it. I love to see people's faces light up with the good that they didn't know was coming. So pastor's anniversary next week, take action. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. We couldn't let another moment go by, another Sunday go by. We want to continue to pay tribute to Reverend Sherry as a little pre-tribute. Uh, we have someone very special who's going to share their appreciation for the work Reverend Sherry has been doing. I think you're going to know who this person is. Here's what I know for sure. Up Church, Della Reese, and the Up Choir unequivocally changed my life. The lessons that I learned that I started learning 21 years ago I use every single day in some way or another to uplift myself, to remind myself of the truth, 
to remind myself to celebrate some awesome stuff going on regardless of what it is. Those lessons then and through the years that I was blessed to be there every Sunday still help me now. So I'm so grateful and I want to say thank you for picking up that and carrying it forward. And I know and I hope that you know that you are changing people's lives for the better because you're doing it. I love you as my friend. I love you and miss you as my hiking partner, even though you like to hike at ridiculously early hours. And I love you as my fellow Wednesday night person who also became a minister. But what I want to tell you most importantly right now is happy anniversary. Hey, everybody. Do you miss your upchurch friends and family? I know we do. And who knows for sure when we'll have an opportunity to be live again. But in the meantime, we do have the after party, which is a great way to socialize, to see your old friends, to chit chat, and to get to know some new friends. See, over the last year, we've had a number of guests and new members from literally all over the world who have begun to uh, fellowship with us here at Up Church, who have begun taking classes, and who have been a part of the after party as well. So I want to invite you to come to the after party every Sunday after church, join in, see your old friends, make some new ones, and have a good time. We look forward to seeing you after church. Hey, here's the link right here in the video, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Let's thank our social media all-stars. Thank you everyone who is helping us to spread the word. Thank you for your shares. Thank you for your likes. Our list is growing longer, people that we need to acknowledge, but we appreciate you. Thank you, you're helping us make a difference. And thank you, Glenda McCray Fikes, for choosing the clips that we're using for the month of May to circulate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you guys. If you want to be a part of our social media team, make sure you reach out to our church office. Let us know and we will put you in the rotation. We would love your help. Hey, stopping by, got a very special announcement. This week's Bible Hangout is going to feature my brother in ministry, the Reverend Charles Taylor. We're going to be talking about a couple of verses in the third chapter of Proverbs, and he will be there to guide us through the metaphysical Bible interpretation. So if you're not already on the list to get the link for the Bible Hangout, make sure you call our church office so that you can get that information. And we will see you on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific.
hasn't today been wonderful? Oh, let me tell you, I am so pleased and so grateful for just all the good that was a part of today's service. And how great was it to see our Morehouse man, Mr. Amiri McKinnon. Thank you so much for that daily inspiration. Thank you, Carlos Fuentes, for sharing with us how you're opening your mind. Thank you, Reverend Cherie. Thank you, our worship team. You guys are amazing, amazing. And thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the people that are working behind the scenes. We've got some exciting things that are coming, some announcements we're going to be making soon. But, you know, don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to let all of that stuff that's baking behind the scenes come together. But right now, I want to take a moment to bless you. I want to bless you to utilize what you have heard today, to take it and make it your own, to stand it on its feet in your life to take these lessons and make them practical, really live them. I know you have the ability to do that. I see you being able to do that. I'll see you in the after party. Can't wait to hang out with you. Let's take our prayer protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and so it is. All right, family, I'll see you soon in the after party. Take care.